In this video, we're going to take a look at the XP Vertex map. We're going to get this from the X Particles menu, Utilities, XP Vertex map. The XP Vertex map has had a complete overhaul and rewrite for the latest update of X Particles. As you can see, the default attribute is an objects list. This is asking what objects want to receive a vertex map. Now, one of the beauties of the new update is this will work on any parametric object. For example, let's add a sphere, drop it in, and you can see the sphere now has a live vertex map. If we look at the vertex map maker, you can now look at the layout. What we have is our object. Now we can have multiple objects in here, so I can then grab something else, let's say a plane, vertex map, and drop this in. And now this plane has its own vertex map. So you can use one vertex map object for an entire scene that all require different vertex maps and different layers. So let's remove the plane for now and just look at the sphere. As you can see, I've removed the object and we now have this empty list. Let's just take this out. So we have our sphere and the first layer is the polygons. Now, if we look in our layer mode, we can look at the different types of layers and if we want to change the default to something else, we simply change it in here. Or we can leave it as it is and look at what it does. So the polygon mode is looking for polygon source objects. So let's say we grab another sphere. We'll shrink this down, move it across, go back to the vertex map and drop this in the objects link list. Select our vertex map and you can see this generates a vertex map on our procedural object. We can increase the segments of this to get more detail into the vertex map. Go back to the options. We have the polygon mode set to surface or it can use the volume of the object. You can choose the range as how far it can generate across the surface and a fall off for that range. We also have blending modes per layer we're not restricted to one layer. So we have this one now. We can also start layering up different types of effects on top. So let's say we want to generate some noise inside this map. What we can do is we can add a new layer. And for this one, let's choose texture. Let's generate a texture and we'll create a noise map. We'll put this onto the vertex map. It can be on any object with inside of the hierarchy. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be set as a tag. On the vertex map, texture, we're going to set the texture to use to select a tag. And we're going to drop this in. Now, if we go back to our vertex map, that then takes over the entire object. If we go back to our vertex map maker, select texture tag, we can then change the transfer modes to control what it's doing. So if we set it to something like subtract, you can see it's now subtracting itself from the previous map, which was the polygon map, and putting it into a subtract mode. And you can then change the strength of that as well. So if we start adjusting this noise map, put some contrast into it, drop the scale, you can see that you fine tune the map as you need and it's live and in real time on the procedural sphere. So this doesn't have to necessarily be just a sphere. Let's say we want it to go across other objects. Let's put a torus into the scene. Drop this down and scale it slightly. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a X particles, utilities, XP join. We're going to put our torus and our sphere into the XP join. In the vertex map, we're going to drop the join in and we're going to put the texture map in here and the polygon. And we'll take out the sphere. It's created this on the surface. So we don't need the default polygon. So now we have the same thing working procedurally across two objects. The torus, we can increase our segments again to get more detail. Same with the sphere. Let's set this to icosahedron. 
and increase the detail. Let's go back to the vertex map. Now, we now have procedurally on a generator these maps being created. We can go to our vertex map object in the effects field. We can then start looking at smoothing the maps out to fine tune exactly what you want the map to look like. Let's hide this. And this is a per layer option. So let's go to the textures layer and smooth this out as well. And you can control the brightness and contrast and the strength of the smoothing per layer. So let's say we want to do something else with this. Go to our vertex map. Let's say we want to add a seed map. And the seed map is like the previous seed mode, but it's looking for an actual vertex map. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the vertex map to itself. So we're going to use linked. We're going to put the map that it's generating into the link. Push play. And now we can start fine tuning this. So let's put some more search radius. And you can see we're procedurally growing a map from itself because it's using its own map that it's generating on the surface to create a growth system. So let's get rid of these and start something else. So let's say we have a plane and we're going to put some segments onto the plane and we'll get our XP utilities XP vertex map and we'll put the plane object in. Let's change the polygon mode for something else. Let's look at splines and we'll get a circle spline. We'll set this to ZX, scale it down. Let's get a couple of these and we're going to give these some default colors. So let's say this one is a pink color and this one is a blue color. Go to the vertex map and we'll put the circles into the link. And if we look at our vertex map, you'll see that we have these created and they will work as expected. However, in the vertex map, you can then open up the name, the vertex map, and use add vertex color tag. What this does is then gets the color from the object and puts that as a colorful vertex map. And this can get color information from anything from particles, splines, anything that can output a color can be used from a, the vertex map to generate these maps. So if we look at the options, we can have the exposure effects, seed object, seed map, polygons, splines, textures, vertex speed, particles and vertices, and also added is curvature and ambient occlusion. So let's have a look at those. Let's take these out and we just have our, let's turn this off, default map. Let's get a object. Like so put it on surface and then if we set this mode from splines to ambient occlusion and then the link is asking for the object, so drop the sphere in and you can see we're now getting an ambient inclusion map directly onto the vertex from this object. This also works live as well inside of the join so let's start this one from scratch so we go back to here and we'll remove the plane and we'll start working on this sphere so let's put this sphere at zero and we're going to get the XP join Put the sphere in, increase the segments, set it to icosahedron just to get more detail. And we're going to put the join into the list and we're going to change the mode to ambient occlusion. If we look at the map, there's nothing going because there's nothing to occlude. But let's make a copy and we'll scale this down and we'll drag it out. And you can see it's creating the ambient occlusion map 
procedurally live on two objects. We can go into the map, effects, increase the smoothing to get it a bit cleaner. And then we can simply create more of these, move them along to get these beautiful live vertex maps. Not only does it work on X particles generator objects, it also works inside of Cinema 4D. Let's get a, another sphere and we'll get a MoGraph cloner. And we'll use the cloner as the source and it creates this map on the cloned objects. And let's say we set this to curvature or ambient occlusion as well. And now you can see we have live procedural maps on Cinema 4D cloners. giving you the ability to create vertex maps on objects that, that has never been possible before inside of X-Particles and Cinema 4D.